So I got this controller from my friend Adam and it goes to a multi-console where you can play NES games, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis. And one of his favorite games is Fester's Quest. So we're going to be taking this controller apart and doing a Fester's Quest theme on it. So let's get to it. Here we go! Russ, what you doing? Russ, what you doing? Russ, what you doing? Let's find out! So here's the Retro Duo controller, and we're going to take it apart, get my handy dandy screwdriver set right here, and just some standard screws. And I thought I had them all, but they hid one behind this sticker, so I had to peel that back and get the last one. And here's the inside. It's a lot different than a regular Super Nintendo controller since this is third party. So we're going to get all the buttons out and then clean everything off and we're putting what we don't need in a Ziploc bag so we don't lose it, all the screws and the rubber membranes. And I'm cleaning everything with a solution of water and rubbing alcohol. Just attaching everything with painter's tape that I'm going to be painting similar colors. So these are all going to have one color so they're on one board and the controller will be a different color. More pesky stickers, ah. Peeling this off and then of course my rubbing alcohol solution gets rid of that mess right there. Now it's on to the paint booth. I'm gonna take these out back to my paint booth and get some spray paint on there. So I'm going to be using Rust-Oleum, right here is a black, a gloss black, and satin blue for the buttons. Make sure to wear protection, and get some gloves on, and we're ready to go. Now I usually let these sit for about 10 minutes. It's a nice warm summer day so it didn't take too long in between coats. But again I'm doing light coats and letting it sit for about 10 minutes and come back with another coat. Usually I do about three coats for the base coat. A few minutes later. Now it's time to add our clear. I'm using Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear. And I use the same process, light coats, and wait about 10 minutes in between each coat. You can put as many as you want there. Usually three is about good enough. Okay, now while that's drying, we're jumping onto the computer to design the actual overlay. Here's the box art for Fester's Quest. Just grabbing an image from Google and bringing it into Photoshop. I want to get that logo right there of Fester's. And then there's some lightning in the background, so I'm thinking I can add that to the design. I'm trying to match the color that's on that box art there, so I'm playing with the sliders there to kind of get it a little bit closer. I think that's pretty close right there, so we are good to go. Now I was thinking of adding the Adams Family house in the back right there, so I cropped it out. And again, I'm going to trim it to fit the controller be hidden a little bit by the d-pad so I'm trying to get the position correct. Now I'm just going to blend the edges. I got the eraser tool so blend it into the final image and I'm going to grab a little bit more lightning I'm trying to make sure I get a PNG lightning file this way it has no background so it's just completely clear so I'm adding that right there and I can size it and turn it around and put it where I need it. This way it looks a little bit more crisp with the lightning and then erase what I don't need and I want it covering the house so we just go in there and clean it up. And again just adding more lightning as need be to fill up the area there. And one more piece right there will clean up the edge and it's looking pretty good. We're going to move on to the back design of the controller. 
And I love this image of Fester sitting outside looking at the UFO. So I think we're going to go with the back on that. Sitting on his little lawn chair. So just trying to see. I have it marked where the screw holes are. This way I know where that image is going to, you know, if it's going to be over a screw hole, you don't want it over Fester's head. So I'm changing them white so I can see where it lands. So right there it's very close to Fester's head. So I can move the image over a little bit if I need to. And we're going to crop around the image as well. So now I just made a copy of the image to fill the uh, scenery there with the background. Just so it matches up a little bit better. Because it wasn't as long as I needed it to be. Alright, so now I'm going back and I really want to get that UFO right there. So I'm trying to grab the image. Unfortunately, it's a GIF so it keeps changing. But there we go. I got one that's paused. And we're going to just get the UFO portion so I can put it where I want. So I'm copying the image and then I can make it larger and move it where I need to be. We just got to get rid of the background a little bit. And perfect. It's looking real sharp now. One more thing left to add is I want the moon in that upper right corner. I feel like it's missing something there. So we're just adding a moon right there and blending it into the background. And just checking what it looks like without the holes in there because they won't be as prominent. It's looking pretty good. I think this is ready to print. And here it is printing out. I'm using a special paper. It's a water slide decal paper. So once you print this, you actually have to seal the ink into it. So I'm going to take it out to my paint booth and I'm going to spray a couple coats of that Rust-Oleum clear on it. So now I'm taking my paper and putting it on my sticky mat here and I'm going to feed it into my silhouette cameo this is going to cut out the design perfectly so this way i don't have to go in with an exacto knife so we're going to load the design up right here and once it's loaded i'm on the computer and we are going to select the project now i already went through and told it where it needs to cut in the program itself and the little razor right there is going to go around, cut the outer edge, and cut out all the circles and the D-pads. This way everything is perfect. Alright, our controller is back in. It's all dry. I'm just going to cut out each sheet and place it in water. It takes a few minutes before it gets ready to slide off of the paper backing. But you just submerge it right in there. And if you didn't do the clear coat on this, the ink would just run. So you have to seal it. You don't skip that step. All right, I'm just checking it, seeing if it's ready. The buttons are popping out, so I can pull all that stuff out. Get my controller ready. And we're testing it. Let's see, you can see it slide off just a little bit right there. That's why it's called water slide decal. So we're gonna do the back first, and we're gonna slide that right on. Now this paper is super, super thin. It crinkles a lot, so you just have to be very slow and gentle. And if it folds over, you can still save it. That top left corner, it's folded a little bit. If you're just gentle and you peel it back, you're good to go. And you can smooth it out because it's got water on there so you can still move it around. It's not a permanent stick. All right, let's try the front of the controller. Same concept. You just have to make sure the D-pad cutout lines up as well as the buttons. And you definitely get a lot of play there. Nice and easy. Does look like it's not savable, but as long as you're careful, you don't have to do another print. Smooth out those wrinkles and you're good to go. And now usually I let it sit for 24 hours so all the water evaporates. 24 hours later. Okay, it's a new day. We are headed to the paint booth. All the water evaporated and I want to seal it in one more time with a little bit more of clear coat. Back to the Rust-Oleum crystal clear. We're going to do two coats on this, 10 minutes in between each coat. I always start with the sides. I get all the sides and then I go back and do the top. That's just how I like painting. There we go. A couple coats across the top. Moving that can back and forth and we're good to go. 11 minutes later. Now it was a nice bright sunny day out so I went out of the paint booth and just did it in my grass so it could be in direct sunlight and it dried very fast. 48 hours later. All right, it's been about two days letting the clear coat really set up. 
So grab these here, get a look at them in the light. There we go. Just gotta add the buttons back on. All right, let's grab all our parts, pull them off of their boards, and we're ready for the final assembly. All right, there's the finished product, the Super Nintendo Fester's Quest Custom Controller from my buddy Adam. He definitely enjoys this game and reached out to me to make this custom controller for him. Now again, he does have a multi-system, so you can use this controller to play NES games, Super Nintendo, or Genesis. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and found it informative. Using water slide decals, you could definitely come up with some cool concepts and transfer them to projects. If you guys have any suggestions of custom controllers you want to see me do, or if you yourself want to get one done, reach out to me on any of the social media platforms, inbox me, and we'll see what we can do. If you guys enjoyed this video here, perhaps you'll enjoy this custom controller that I made right here. I have a full playlist of lots of custom items that I made on the channel, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. As always, guys, I'm Russ Lyman, and keep your world fun bit by bit. I'll see you next video.